Welcome to the Building Knowledge Channel. I'm Jamie Perkins of the Perkins Builder Brothers, and today we're gonna to talk a little bit about pressure treated wood and some things that you might be interested to know. Over the years, we've used all kinds of pressure treated wood products, and I just wanna share with you some of the things that I've learned about it over the years that might be helpful and save you some real trouble down the road. All of the wood that you would frame a house with, we're talking two by fours, two by tens, two by twelves. It's all kiln dried down to a maximum level. I said maximum of 19% moisture content. I think that's in the code book or something somewhere. So that's good because it's relatively dry. It's going to dry a little bit more probably, and it depends on the climate that you live in. So that's a good kind of neutral position that is good for any area. Now, pressure treated wood, on the other hand, when you buy I call it wet pressure treated wood, you'll know it because you pick it up and it is wet to the touch, it's heavy. I don't know what its moisture content is. It's probably like... It's it's wet enough where if you smack it with a hammer, it splashes. Yes, it it's very saturated, okay? It's way more wet than any other framing material you would buy. And it's from the pressure treating process because it's like submerged in like this submarine tank looking uh, pressure cooker thing that forces the chemical treatment to go inside the wood. And that's how they get the treatment to penetrate inside the grain. Anyway, what I'm saying is it's really wet. And we don't like to use wet wood because wet wood will shrink, it will twist, it will do all kinds of bad things. So um, As it dries. Yeah, as it dries. As the moisture leaves, the board actually shrinks, and it shrinks in length, it shrinks in width, it shrinks in thickness in all ways. So we try to avoid using any wet pressure treated wood for any critical application where a change of size in any dimension would actually destroy your project or make it look terrible in a very short amount of time after it dries. So, like top caps? Yeah, on handrails, handrails on our, on our decking terrible. handrails, we always try to use kiln-dried pressure-treated wood. Uh, it seems to be a better quality product, and it does cost more, though. Mm. See, that's the catch. You can buy wet pressure-treated wood for cheaper, and it will dry. And may look like crap later. It might. Or you can buy dry pressure-treated wood, and it's already basically in its final dimension. It, it won't change much. All right, let's, let's take decking, for example. Um, today we're using a composite deck that really won't change any size, any shape, any anything. It's fixed size. It will not shrink. It will not dry. And it's a uh, Trex brand. Yes. Is what we're using. And, and that's what we prefer to use. But sometimes we do use wood decking still under a cupboard with a roof. Uh, it can still last a long time. Now, there are two kinds of wood-treated decking you can get. You can get the dried or the wet. If you get the wet pressure-treated wood, mm, you can I be, going with this. You, <laughs> I think you do. You can be guaranteed it will shrink in the width, at oh. least. It might shrink in the length, too, and that could be a major problem. Uh, so here's the deal. If you got wet pressure-treated boards for your decking, you need to put them edge-to-edge -edge tight. Yes. I'm talking as tight as you can get them. Yeah, we prime together with a chisel. When you squeeze them together, you'll see water come out of the surface of the board. That's how you know you got them tight. Yeah. All right. I'm, but not, I'm not even kidding. They won't stay. Like a lot of people don't <clears throat> believe us when we say this, but what will it do? Well, after I would say only a few weeks, you will notice that there will be gaps between the boards. They will not be tight anymore. But actually, it's kind of nice because they've really evenly gapped themselves because of the drying and the shrinking action. Yeah. It actually will give a really good, consistent-looking gap yeah. when it is dried. Okay, let's just say you get dried pressure-treated decking boards. And I'm talking about five-quarter by six. That's what we call them. That means it actually measures an one inch. inch thick. That's, they call it a five-quarter. Who would have thought? Anyway, you better be certain to leave a gap when you put five-quarter... Uh, dried boards mm -hmm. down because they will not shrink so if you butt them tight and then they get rained on what do you think will happen they will pop <laughs> well they'll swell up yeah. and as they swell they will actually fit tighter together and it actually could hold water like you could walk out on your deck and there could be standing Puddles. water on your deck it's kind of like a um wh what do they do when they make whiskey um, oh, it's a barrel. A barrel. Yeah. Okay, they use a they wood. They char the inside of the barrel. They do. It's really dry it. wood. They take super dry wood, I think white oak, and they make a barrel out of it. There's no glue. There's nothing holding the boards together except Man, you know a lot about rings. bourbon. I don't know. Well, listen, <laughs> uh, I watch a lot of TV or YouTube, actually. <laughs> so when they put the liquid in it, okay, yeah. the liquid somewhat actually swells the wood. Yeah, it and does. it makes it even tighter. So it doesn't leak. You can make a watertight barrel or at least a whiskey-tight barrel with dry wood, with no glue, because it swells up, okay? That's the same thing your deck will do if you use dried boards yeah. and you put them tight. And we're getting and a little off track here, but yeah. I, I want to point out that if you were to uh, put gaps between your wet pressure-treated boards, yes. instead of banging them tight, yeah. 
when they did dry, your gaps might be like um, small enough for a, a small inch? child to fall through. Yeah, ladies with high heels. Yeah, so I've seen that. Bad, bad. Yeah, I mean, and, and people just don't realize when they do that. They, they don't, you know, they just don't know what's going to happen. Something interesting to note about the treatment process is that the chemicals are actually corrosive to steel, which happens to be what most nails and other fasteners are made out of, which is a problem. So you have to use nails that are coated with, say, zinc, which is hot dipped galvanized. The zinc isn't affected by that chemical or some other kind of painted coating like on deck screws. If you don't, the nail can just rust in half, disappear, and your framing may just come apart. All right. Have you ever seen a piece of pressure treated wood that have one of these funny looking plugs in it? Look at that. This is a brand new board. As far as we know. Well, <laughs> now we have to question everything. So um, what is it? What it is, I think at least, somebody told me once that they check to see how deep the pressure treated chemical goes into the wood. And, and what they do is they drill a hole and take a core sample, if you will, mm -hmm. and they somehow analyze the core and determine if the uh, pressure treatment went into the wood deep enough. Okay. That's what it's for. So then they fill the hole with a little plug of pressure treated wood, and uh, this is pressure treated and kiln dried. They call it KDAT. 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 Kiln dried after treatment, they call that. Let's take this a step farther. There are at least, and maybe more, I bet there's more types of pressure treated wood. And what I mean is that some of them are rated, some of them are rated to be in contact with the earth, with the dirt, with the ground. For example, a six by six post on the little tag on the end of it, it's gonna say ground contact rated. Okay, like they that. Would call that GC, ground contact, GC something. And that means you can put it into the ground and it won't rot. Not really fast anyway. Uh, <laughs> most two by material, like two by fours, two by six and eights and tens, they are probably normally not ground contact rated, but some of them are these KDATs, kiln dried after treatment. A lot of those are ground contact rated. You might want to use say a two by 12 on a set of stairs off of your deck and it might touch the ground. So you would probably want to choose a ground contact rated board for that application. Otherwise, if it's suspended up in the air, it doesn't matter. I don't think. Um, and I would bet there's more kinds of treatment for like coastal areas or like marine treatment, like say a pylon that they're going to build a pier with. I don't think that's the same as the stuff that we build decks out of. Probably not. And I decking, don't think it is. the five quarter decking, mostly not ground contact. Probably rated. not. And I hate to say it, but that's, uh, that stuff sometimes rots faster than any other pressure treated material that I have seen. And I have also noticed when you cut through the middle of the board, it seems to have the least amount of treatment that penetrates toward the center of the board. Like it right. looks sometimes, not always, but sometimes it looks not very treated in the inner part of the wood. Uh, the edges are, you know, but uh, that doesn't seem good to me for outdoor application. So there's a lot to this pressure treated thing, right? And, and there's a whole lot more than we can even say right now. I mean, we're just like, wow. Um, but let's talk about the dimension of the lumber, okay? The lumber is milled and machined to a certain size before it's pressure treated. So they probably come out of that big machine all the same size, I would guess at least. And then they go into the pressure treating chamber where they're flooded with a liquid chemical treatment and it's pressurized. I don't know how high pressure, it's probably really high and it forces it into the wood. Every piece of wood has a little bit different grain, a little bit different density maybe, a little bit different amount of absorption that it can handle. So it's gonna take on a little bit different amount of moisture. And therefore they might come out of the treatment a little bit different sized. Or a lot of bit different. Or a lot. I mean, up to a quarter of an inch I would say is common in a board. And I've seen them up to half or more difference. Yeah, yeah it definitely could be. Say in a two by 10 or a two by 12, yeah, yeah. They, they could vary in width by a half of an inch because one board might be really dense and it may not take on a lot of uh, moisture and the other board could be very soft and it could take on a whole ton and it would actually like actually expand like a sponge. Yes. Basically wood is porous. Yeah. I want to add to this that it, that can make it a real struggle to frame something out of this material that's all different thicknesses when you need to plane out FOT yeah. flush on top for say decking and you know you've got boards that are you know joists for instance or girders that are up to a half or more difference in thickness and you're trying to flush them on the top, that means the bottoms are all out of alignment, or you flush the bottoms and then use a power planer 
to flush the tops. So just saying it's pretty a normal yeah. occurrence for us to have to kind of battle the pressure treated material, you know, a lot more than regular kiln drive material. It is a process of choosing the lesser of the evils, I think, when it comes to f figuring out where you're going to put the difference or whether you're going to rip them all down to be the same pump. I yeah. don't know. You but when do they that. dry, they may dry to be different because yeah. the ones you – it's hard to say. It's, it's a tough it's a tough thing. But that's something we wanted to throw in there about pressure-treated wood that it is common for it to be a struggle. So don't be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> when you're going to assemble a two-ply pressure-treated beam, you should look at the cup of the boards. If they are cupped, then you would want to orient the cups opposing each other this way so that the top and the bottom edges touch and as they dry more, because they will, they actually become more flat towards each other. Yeah, okay? and that's because the outside's gonna dry faster than the inside. Yes, the outside will dry, and as it dries, it will shrink. Drying equals shrinking, and more moisture equals swelling. Yeah. So, and believe it or not, one face of the board can dry faster than the other, and it will cause it to cup in different ways. So Eric likes to cut me off all the time because I talk too much. So this channel, uh, the Building Knowledge channel, is designed so that I can just keep talking. Yeah, it's so, all for you. Because some, some people <laughs> want to actually hear, uh, you know, some of the things that we've learned over the years. So that's what it's all about. But here's the thing you can try. If you have a board that's cupped, like this one right here. Check this out. Here, get a shot oh, of yeah. that. that. Now, is... that's a really cupped board. And uh, you can see if I put something straight across the top of it. Look at this. Okay. So this is a cupped board. Now, we're not going to use this board because it actually is so cupped that it's undesirable. But as an experiment, you could actually take a board like this, put that cup side up in the sun, and let it sit for a whole day or two. And I would almost bet that it'll flatten out. I'm just saying. So maybe we'll do that and then use and we that could, later. We could do an experiment. Hey, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope it's helpful to you because Eric and I are trying to combine our 40 years of construction experience to help you to have some building knowledge that will help you in your daily life. And if you didn't know, we have another YouTube channel called Perkins Builder Brothers that is kind of our main channel, and it's 40 years combined. We're not combined. that old. That's... Thanks for watching, folks. Yeah. <laughs>